In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create this 3D candle model completely from scratch. I'm gonna show you how you can create a base model with sculpting, how you can create a simple wax material, the wick, and I'm gonna reveal some interesting tricks. For example, how we can make the flame always face the camera. So let's go right into it. So the first important thing that you need to make a realistic 3D model of a candle is to make some sort of reference. I like to use image reference because they are very easy to follow and you can every time pull up them and just look at them and see if you are following the shape, if you are following the structure. Right now I'm using a pure ref, which is basically an app that will allow you to create an infinite canvas. So we can basically add unlimited number of images here, but you can use whatever you want. So let's open a new project and let's delete the default cube. And we want to start with the right shape because if we simplify the shape of the candle, it's just mostly a cylinder with some details. Now we need to start with the cylinder first and then we add the details later with sculpting. So with shift A, let's add the cylinder. Let's scale it on the Z axis by pressing S and Z. And now we need to apply the scale. So with control A, we will apply the scale. Now click tab and in edit mode, we will now select the top and the bottom face and we will click X and we will delete the faces. Now, before we actually start sculpting, we need to get rid of these uneven rectangle faces and we need to set up a square topology. So with Ctrl R, we're gonna add some loop cuts. Let's add 22 loop cuts. Now select the top edge loop and with F3 on your keyboard, search for fill grid command and do the same for the bottom part. So select the edge loop and we can basically repeat the command with Shift R. Now the mesh is ready for sculpting, so let's go to sculpt mode. And this is the fun part where you can go creative. We will use sculpting to actually create this melting effect and to actually add more details on the surface. So the first thing that you need to do is choose your brush. You can choose from many brushes here, I'm gonna choose this one. And now we can basically start matching the shape of the candle. I would recommend to start by creating the basic shape first and then creating the details. Now another useful tool for sculpting is the dynamic topology which is a tool that you can enable right here. When you enable this tool, Blender will dynamically adjust the topology based on how close you are to the mesh. So when you get closer to the mesh, Blender will add more polygons and more details to your object. And again, this is very useful because this way you don't have to rely on the limited geometry of your mesh. And you can dynamically adjust the level of detail where it's necessary. You can make the top part uneven because as you can see on the reference images, the candle is burning uneven. And that's what I'm trying to replicate, but you can use a whole different approach. If you want to adjust your brush, here you can change the radius of the brush if you want to make it either smaller or bigger. And here you can change the strength. After you make the top part, you can start adding the droplets, which will create this melting effect. And you can do this by adding vertical lines from top to the bottom of the candle. Again, it's better to start with the big ones to create the base shape, and then you can add the smaller ones to add the additional detail. And if you feel that some areas are too sharp, you can actually use this smooth brush to smooth out the areas. You can actually use this more frequently to smooth out the polygons. You can do this several times during the sculpting to smooth the polygons out. Anyways, the whole sculpting process took me like 20 minutes. I added some additional droplets, I smoothed out the bottom part, I made the edges more elevated, I added even more melting effects from more sides. But this just depends on you. If you want a simple candle with minimal melting, you can basically keep the most out of the cylinder and you don't have to sculpt much detail. But I thought it would be great to actually add this melting effect because at the end all the sculpted detail that I added will contribute to better appearance once we add the materials and the lighting. Now after you are done with your sculpting you can go to edit mode and you can immediately see that the topology is horrible. Now in most cases I would actually remesh this 3D model because in terms of unwrapping and texturing this topology is completely unusable. However we are not gonna apply image textures so even though the topology is terrible we can actually keep it like this. However, if you want to change the topology of the 3D model, you have two options. You can either go to the modifiers, you can add the remesh modifier, you can change it to smooth, now you can just adjust the settings until you get the right results. The second way how you can remesh your 3D model is by going to the object data properties. Here you can find this remesh window and you can choose one of these two remesh methods. But now we want to add the wick. So let's start by adding a simple cylinder. Let's move it up. Let's scale it only on the X and Y axis. I want the wig to be a little curved, so I'm gonna add some loop cuts, I'm gonna select the top face, and I'm gonna use the proportional editing to rotate the top part of the wig. Nice. Now we have the candle, so now when we have the 3D model and we have the wig, let's go apply some materials. So we'll go to shading, select the candle, and let's make a quick wax material. So first let's change the base color to something like this. 
You can of course use whatever color you want, but I'm gonna go with the traditional yellow wax. Now what is special about wax is that there is a lot of subsurface scattering happening inside the material. So whenever light hits the surface, part of the light will be reflected, but the light that is refracted is gonna scatter through the material, which will create that sort of translucent and soft effect. If you ever saw the cool effect when you took a flashlight and you put it on your hand and you could see the red light through your skin, that's basically the same effect that we are trying to make here. And for that we have this subsurface section here. So if you increase the weight, and you increase the scale, you can see that we are basically achieving this effect. We can actually see this effect when I add the light source and I put it very close to the edge. You can see that the light is penetrating through the material and it's scattering inside the object. And because candles are pretty reflective, we are gonna bring the roughness all the way down to something like 0.15. And for the wick I'm gonna add a separate material and I'm gonna add a magic texture. And we will plug the color into the bump node, plug the texture to the height, and then plug the bump node to the normal socket of the principal BSDF. And because the wick is burning on the top, I want to make the top part burned. And we can do this by adding a texture coordinate, taking the generated output and connect it to the separate XYZ node. Now take the Z depth and plug it to the color ramp. And now, now we can see that if I adjust the black value, we can create a mask for the burnt part. So now I'm gonna add the mix RGB node, connect the color ramp to the factor and change the B color to black. And now if we connect this to the color and preview the material, we can see that now we have the top part black and we can adjust it by moving the sliders. And of course, the last thing is the flame itself. If you are using a static render, you can just use an image, but I'm gonna use a video because I want the candle to be animated. And for that, you can use a video like this one from VFX assets. So again, press shift A, go to image and click on mesh plane. Now find the video and now just rotate and align the footage with the candle. Now we are almost done. As you can see, I'm using a video for the candle flame effect, but we need to get rid of that black background. Take the color output, plug it to the color ramp, and then plug the output of the color ramp to the alpha channel. Now we have the transparent background, but we need to make the flame glow. And to make the flame glow, you will expand this emission panel, you will take the color output of the footage, you will connect it to the color, and then you will increase the emission strength. Also, here's one more tip. If you have a camera and you want the flame to always face the camera, first you will select the flame footage, then go to constraints and add track to constrain. You will select the camera as a target and you will play with some of these settings until the plane will always face the camera. And now we have a fully functional candle. Here's the final result with the render. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to see similar videos like this, check out my YouTube channel Graffinity. Also subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next video.